Fighters, what's going on? Today, I had the privilege of interviewing for a second time my buddy Brian Kaskavalsian. Uh, he's with G4 Marketing. He has a podcast called The Wealthy Contractor. And today, we talked about a bunch of stuff um, about growing your business and all the good stuff. We talked about his new book called The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor. Uh, so I invite you to listen to that. If you're not familiar with Brian, go back to episode... I believe it was 126 of the contractor fight. Yeah, it's 126. Go back there, and we, uh, we talk about more of his story, how he built this monster handyman business and stuff like that. So uh, you can also, um, I want to make sure I put this in here in the audio. If you go to thewealthycontractor.com forward slash free book, you can actually get his book for free. Just pay for the postage uh, and all that good stuff. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Brian. Brian, welcome back to the Contractor Fight. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Tom. Thanks for having me. Are you still sitting it's been in way Florida? too long. It has been. Are you still in Florida? I am. I'm yeah, in Miami. Miami, right? Yep. I have not been to Florida in, well, I was in Florida in 2008 for like eight hours when I had a layover and I crashed there one night flying back home yeah. when I lived in Chicago. I'm in Colorado now. Uh, we had like two inches of snow the other day. No way. Yeah, we did. It was like 79 the day before and like 70 the day after. And we had a fucking day of snow right in the middle. I'm like, Unbelievable. Yeah, there's like highway shut down and stuff like that. But so you were on um, episode 126. Wow. Of the contractor fight. And now we're up around 250, 260, somewhere in there. Uh, so it's been a while. And last time, just to kind of refresh, we talked, we talked a lot about your, your old handyman business. We talked about um, one of the concepts I love was how to earn the right to make a high profit. You know, yeah. we talked about, a lot about value and things like that. And, um, you know, getting, uh, you know, how to get better leads and a bunch of things like that. So guys that are listening, uh, if you've not heard that episode, just go in your podcast thing, find episode 126. And uh, you'll hear a great talk that Brian and I had. But today, man, I know uh, we're going to be talking a little bit. <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is kind of going on me here. Um, we're going to talk about a, a new book that you have out. Yeah. And uh, what, what's that all about, man? First of all, when did you decide to write it? Why'd you write it? And um, I'm just curious because, I, you know, I, it's been on my radar to write a book for yeah. a while. I just felt like... Um, I almost feel like we could just transcribe a bunch of these podcasts and I'd have a fucking book. You know, well, we can talk about that later. I could help you with that. All right, man. Well, coach me up. So, well, so tell us about the book. So look, I, you know, mm -hmm. what's funny is I did, a, I did a, uh, a, a training. I don't know. It was probably a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And it was called The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor. And it got really great feedback because it was all about it was all about having the right mindset. It had nothing to do with selling jobs and it, 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 you know, and making leads and all of that. Everybody thinks that that's the most important part of the job, and it's really not. And so I, I did that. We put it out. It was popular. And then I took that recording and I actually uploaded it as a podcast episode. I don't know what <laughs> episode number it is. And that was that became one of my most popular podcast episodes. And so really? now, you know, between you and me and now all of your listeners, I'll go behind the scenes a little bit. I wasn't real happy with some of the, the structure. I mean, I think the, the, the message was good, but I wasn't real happy with, with the whole thing. And so I thought, well, let me take this and let me turn it into like mm -hmm. a little cheat sheet. I, literally, it was going to become like a three or four page cheat sheet on the seven secrets to becoming a wealthy contractor. So I, I gave it to somebody and I said, hey, uh, you know, kind of put this together as a cheat sheet. I got it back and I was just I looked at it and I thought, you know, it just does not do the material justice. Mm. It needs more. And so I started working on it and I thought, OK, now I'll just, you know, I'll limit it to 10 pages. Then I'll make it, you know, and then I just realized this has to be a book. And so I've spent the last, 
God, I don't know, off and on probably the last four or five months, really punching it up and, and, and looking at it. And uh, so now I've got the book, seven, the, the book. seven secrets to becoming a wealthy contractor, how to make more money, take more time off and live your best life. Well, that's, that's what the fight's all about, which is why you're here, man. And, and uh, I know every time we get together, I learn something. I know, you know, last time uh, we got a lot of great feedback from, from having you on the show. And so why don't you uh, give us the 30,000 foot view? Just tell, give us what the seven secrets are first. And then maybe we'll dig into one. You want me to give them away? They're secrets. (laughs) Or then you give, you just between, okay, this is just between you and me. All right. Just between us. Here we go. Here's the secrets, right? Here we go. Secret number one, the wealthy contractors knows what he or she wants and reverse engineers their business to deliver those results. Love it. Number two, the wealthy contractor takes total responsibility for every outcome in their business and their life. Mm. I noticed one of your, you know, you and I are so aligned. You could write this, you you and I, I mean, you could write the same book. Mm -hmm. Um, Number three, the wealthy contractor is 100% committed, not 99%, not 99.5, but 100% committed no matter what. Secret number four is the wealthy contractor understands the business that they are really in, which we talked a little bit about on the last episode that we Mm -hmm. did together. Secret number five is the wealthy contractor takes control of their time. Secret Mm -hmm. number six is the wealthy contractor takes control of their mind, which is what you are all about. Yep. And secret number seven is the wealthy contractor takes massive unrelenting action, which is also something that you are all about. You know, you could read those chapter titles, those, those seven secrets and literally just go, okay, I'm good. You can hang that shit on your wall. Yeah. You could live that mantra. You could check those boxes. That's what I love about it. You come right out of the gate with clarity. Like what the fuck do you want? Right. And, and I, that, that's been um, uh, probably the biggest thing that I've learned over the last couple of years is how, and, and I'm including myself in this, how s- most of us have no idea truly at the end of the day what we want. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day that I, um, th- there's a lot of coaches out there. There's a lot of coaching groups that are out there. And they're all going, you got to build a $10 million, $20 million business. If, if not, right. you're a fucking loser. And right. I'm like, well, wait a minute. What about the guy? Like I got a guy in one of my group, groups um, uh, who he makes, his business does like 340 to 360 a year. He pays himself 150 a year and he, take, and he works like three and a half, four days a week. And when it's fishing season, you can't find the motherfucker. Yep. And he's happy as hell. He, he's got no debt. He's, you know, things like that. And I look at that and I go, well, why isn't that guy just as successful as quote unquote, the guy with the $10 million business. And to me, he is because he he has that clarity around what he wants. So I know there's a lot of meat here. Knowing you, there's a lot of meat in these seven secrets. So what, what do you feel makes the most sense for us to camp out on today? Man, we can talk about, it. you know, the wanting thing, the secret number one. And so it's, it, what's interesting, what I, what I tried to do with this book is I tried to do it as almost like foundational. Mm-hmm. So secret number one, you need secret number one, and then you build secret number two on top of it, and then three, and then four, and then five. If we just talked about secret number one, what you just talked about right there, those are conversations I have all the time. So I, you know, I deal with, most of the guys I deal with are in multi-millions. Right. You know, they're doing 4 billion, 6 million, whatever. And it amazes me. So here, I'll give you an example. Can I give you an example of, some, of a conversation that Absolutely. I had? Absolutely. Right around this, okay? Yep. And it, and it kind of like, when you have the conversation and you deliver the suggestion, it's almost like you can like, hear their heads explode because it's so contrary to what people have told them or what they've told themselves. So for example, and I I have so many examples of this. I'm going to pick one guy though. So this guy started his business like three years ago. Okay. 
First year, came out of the gate, did over a million dollars in sales. Second year did, I don't know, whatever he did, like two or three million. Third year passes four something million dollars, okay? I ask him, how much money are you making? This guy's still running leads. Like half the business is being written by him. So he's got a full-time job as a salesperson and then he's building the business at the same time, right? Yep. So immediately it's like, dude, you got to stop selling. Yeah, but I can't stop selling because if I do, then blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So then I say, okay, and he's not making money. His, his margins are horrible, right? He's making, he's doing like four and a half million dollars a year, making 150,000 a year, but he's got two full-time jobs, right? Wow. So, so I say, okay, well, well, what's your goal for next year? And he gave me some, I don't, whatever it was, $6 million. And what, what's crazy is that people think that, well, if I just do more, that's going to solve my problem. Right. Right. So I pull back and I say to that guy, I said, well, first off, look, man, from my experience, if you can't make money at 4 million, you ain't making money at six. Mm -hmm. You're not making money at eight, 10, 20, because you have your profit model completely wrong. Okay. That's one side of it. The other side of it is I said, do you need, so if you're doing $6 million, your minimum, minimum profit should be 600,000 after you've paid yourself and paid everything else. Mm -hmm. Minimum, right? Ideally, your net should be 15 plus percent. Okay, call it 15, right? So if you're doing $6 million, you need to net, what is that, $900,000. I asked the guy, he said, is that how much money you want to make? And it's like, he didn't even think about it that way. It's right. like $900,000 would completely transform this guy, anybody's life, right? Yeah, yep. So I said to the guy, I said, how much money do you want to make? And nobody had ever asked him that question before. How much money do you want to make? How much money will it take for you to live your ideal lifestyle? Yep. Right? So to me, you know, ideal is kind of like, well, how much do you need for your lifestyle? So your house, your car, your boats, your vacations, whatever. Okay? How much do you need for that? Then how much do you need for your future wealth? Because you got to mm -hmm. put money away, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just spend everything you make. You got to live on less than what you make. So how much income do you want to take out and put away? How much do you want to give away? Right? Because we all have to give money away. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's actually a wealth, powerful wealth strategy. But it's also the right thing to do. And then, of course, you have to factor in your taxes. Right? Yep. So I say to the guy, I say, what about this? I say, instead of trying to take your bit, you're already at $4 million. Instead of trying to take your business to six or to eight and work just as hard and make little to no money, I say, why don't you next year focus on doing the same amount of revenue, but instead of no profit, focus entirely on your bottom line. Mm -hmm. Focus on making $400,000 on your $4 million. Yep. Would that change your life? Oh my God. Yes. What could you do with $400,000? Right. You know, and then he goes down the list. Right. And then by the way, you know, that money then could be taken and invested into the business to replace all of the jobs he's doing. So this guy needs a sales system, right? Yep. So he needs to go and pay to have a sales system installed in his business. He doesn't need to figure it out. There's people out there, people like mm -hmm. you that he can go to and say, Hey, I need a sales system write you a check. You know, yeah. one of my, um, one of my mentors is a guy named Dan Sullivan from the strategic coach. Yep. And Dan Sullivan says that if you can write, if you have a problem, I know where you're going. And, this is, a and you can write a check. Yeah. You, you don't, don't have, have a, problem. a problem. The problem's gone. Yep. Right. Yep. So I want to break this down 4 million yeah. bucks. I got my calculator. I'm playing with my calculator yeah. as you're talking. And this is what you said some earlier, like everybody thinks just by doing more, it's going to fix my problems, right? And, and let's agree for everybody listening here that yes, there's a certain revenue point that you have to be at to make a certain amount of money. I get that, right? Yep. But in this guy's case, 
if he literally just did $4 million again, raised his gross profit by 5%, okay, that would be another $200,000 right there. Right. Right, of the 400 that you're talking about. So let's break it down even further. If this, I don't know what industry is in, but he's got a $20,000 average job size. Yeah. Okay. It's that more means, like, it's, let's just say it's more like 10. Okay. So it's 10 grand. Windows and in, windows inside. All right. So that means $500 more per job. Per job. And, and I guarantee you, you and I, you or, and or I could walk into that guy's office right now, sit down with his team and in one hour, give them a plan to find $500 more on every fucking job they're doing right. and problem solved. Right. Okay. So this, I don't want people hearing this to go, Oh my God, like they hear 200,000, 900,000, they get overwhelmed. This is the, this is getting into the batter's box every day and getting on base with yeah. just 5%, 5% better of your gross profit. And usually, usually that's in efficiencies. It's the way you're, you're setting your guys up in the sense of giving them a clear scope of work and, and, and having daily huddles and shit like that. So this is yeah. really easy to do. Um, yeah, there was, there was a guy who called me uh, a couple months ago um, and he didn't end up working with me. It was, it was a sales call and, and we weren't, weren't a good fit. He didn't like what I said, um, apparently. <laughs> and, and he said, I want to grow my business to 5 million bucks. And over the course of 10 minutes or so on the phone, I finally got to the why. I said, well, why do you want to grow right. a $5 million business? And he goes, because I want to pay myself $250,000. And I said, so you're, you're telling me that unless you're 5 million bucks, you can't pay yourself 250,000. It was total silence. It was like, you know, yeah. crickets. And he was one of these guys that, I'll just say it, a lot of guys are like this. They want to show the world that they have the biggest balls. They have the most right. trucks. They have this. They have this. One of my business partners, man, it's funny. His business, he's, he's a multimillionaire from another business that he sold. He's got another business now that he's had for about 15 years. Um, and it does about 1.4 to 1.6 a year. And dude, check this out. Owner's, owner's salary on 1.5 is year in year out between five and six hundred thousand dollars wow owner's salary okay and that's because he is clear he has a mantra that's my partner steve his mantra is don't mess with the money yeah like that's his thing and, and in my world in my programs we call it get oxygen right you got to get your oxygen and what you do with it is your business but um so i'm looking at your steps here are the, the secrets and as as i'm looking at them you're talking about like they each build on each other. Yeah. What I see, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, is most people jump right to another, number seven. Yeah. You know, massive action. Like they, they heard about their buddy who did this, so they go run and they do that. And they do yep. this or, and, and things like that. So what, what's been um, – how do, you, how do you – what advice do you give to somebody who um, – maybe wants to blow off one through six or kind of half-ass them. <laughs> well, you can, but, but you know what's going to happen. You're just going to end up running into walls. Well, yeah, kind of like it, your $4 million guy, right? Yeah. yeah. It, you know, and the thing is, and the numbers, it's, I say this all throughout the book, the numbers don't matter. It, you know, I know people that income-wise – are perfectly happy at 50 or 60 grand a year. And then I got, pe and then I know people that are unhappy at 5 million a year. Mm -hmm. it, the numbers don't matter. It only matters to you. But if you don't know why, so why am I chasing after that next bright, shiny object, which is the sales training or the new lead generation, the, mm -hmm. the new whiz bang lead generation thing that comes around. Yeah, look, and that's why so many people fail. You know, consulting is a, it, it, most people fail when they hire a consultant. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of times the consultant, see, this is one of the things I like about you. And if you look at my first book, I realized the hard way that when I did consulting work, I could go into somebody and I could, just like you said, we can, you and me could walk into a business. We can look at that $4 million and you and me will find half a million like that yeah. in two seconds. Right. But then you deliver that message and say, okay, 
great. In order to do that, we have to do this, 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 and this. Go, right? And then you come back three months later and shit's worse than it was when you got there, right? Yep. Yep. Now you got to come up with a whole new plan. The problem with that is, yes, they might go after it, but if they don't know why they're going after it, right? Mm -hmm. That goes all the way back to secret one. It's like, well, why? Why do you want to make more money? And then the other thing too is now you skip number six. Number six is getting your head straight. Yeah. If you can't program yourself. So this guy, you know, that you were talking about, the guy that wants to do 5 million so he can make 250, he's not programmed his mind. He's not rewired his mind for a $250,000 income. So all of us have a quote unquote set point, right? right? So, you know, for the longest time, you know, I had a set point of, you know, whatever, this number. Mm -hmm. Well, my goal number was four times that number. I can't, you can't just wake up one day and say, oh, wow, I'm, and I'm going to go meditate. I'm going to use, you know, the, the secret and I'm going to like go and, <laughs> you know, and, and meditate on it. And now I'm going to become, you know, I, I'm going to make four times the amount of money. You got to work at it. You got to rewire the crap that's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. So I would sit down and I, and I give some examples of stuff you have to do. I would sit down every morning. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning this. And then at the bottom of the paper, I would put in why I want to make that money and where the, the bucket of where that money is going to go. And it took me, it took a year and a half to do it. I, it was a year and a half because, yeah, there was an in-between. So the in-between was actually two and a half times my set point. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is working. I kept doing it. And then, boom, last year went past it. Right. I increased my, my, my income by four times. Now, I was very clear on what the number was, and I was very clear about where the money was going to go. And sure as shit. That's how the money is pretty much ending up, right? Now, the question is, do I want to do it again? Do I want four times the money that I'm doing now, right? right? right. Or is it maybe one time or two? But the, but, the, but the thing is, is going back to the original question is, if I had just taken actions that I thought were going to get me there, I was not going to work because I tried that for 10 years before, Right. I just thought, well, I need more leads or I need more sales or I need more this or I need, no, I needed to get my head right. And in order to get your head right, you got to get your time right. That's secret number five. Right? That's exactly where I was going next. I was right. looking at these going, where do I want to camp on? And, and time is the big thing with the people that listen to this show. Like um, one of the things we always talk about here is quit stealing from your family, right? right. Whether it's time and money. And so, absolutely. Um, how, how does somebody take a hundred percent? How does somebody take a hundred percent control of their, their time? What's that look like? Well, you've got to look at everything you're doing. What are you doing in your business? So there's too many people in business that are doing what I call the thing. Okay. So the thing in the case of my guy that I gave you the example of the thing for him was going out and selling. Mm -hmm. That's like the worst thing that he could do, even though he was better at it than anybody else, right? Yeah. Because if you are going to build a business, if you're going to build an enterprise, you can't be out running leads. You can't be out installing toilets. You can't be out doing, again, the thing. You can't be standing behind a cash register. You can't be making sandwiches. You can't be right. fixing a car. And that's the hardest thing for people to get is that, man, I got to stop doing that because you could hire somebody to do that stuff, mm -hmm. right? If you can hire somebody to do it and you can create a process around it and train them on how to do it, you should not be doing it. I can't train somebody to be Tom Reber. I mm -hmm. can't do it. Only Tom knows where his business is going and only Tom can make those those things happen. Every business needs a leader. Every business using the, the vernacular of EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system, which we use here in, in our company through the book Traction, every business needs a visionary. 
Yeah. Somebody needs to tell everybody else where we're going. Bingo. Yep. You know, and if you aren't doing that in your business, you don't have a business. You just have a really bad job most of the time. Yeah. Right. So understand where are you spending your time? Are you spending, you know, as we learned from the EMIF, are you in your business or are you working on your business? And, and by the way, Tom, start if, look, if, if you are right now doing everything in your business, the most powerful thing you can do. So a lot of people will tell you, well, go work on your business. Well, what the fuck does that mean? Go yeah. work on my business. <laughs> I'm struggling to make payroll. What do you mean work on my business? Here's what you do. And I, and, and one of the, and I, and I have a uh, presentation on this as one of the resources for the book. I call it my library strategy. Hmm. Okay. Here it is. It's super simple. Find one day a week and go for four hours, block out your calendar, four hours, that's it, half a day, and start with that. And take this time, no yeah. cell phone, no internet, no email, no distractions. I used to go to the library to do this, quiet, free, right. no one's going to bother you. Time moves slow. Go sit there and work on your business or start by working on yourself, right? Yeah. That's the most powerful work that you can do. If you don't know how to work on your business yet, fine, work on yourself. Work on rewiring your brain for whatever it is that you want, for success, for wealth, for freedom. That's what this is all about. Business is all about success, wealth, and freedom. That's it, right? And so yeah. go work on that. Just half a day, a week. Do that for a while. It, you'll be amazed at what starts to happen around you. And then when you've gotten good at half a day, then what's next? Mm -hmm. Go full day. Or you Go do two day. half days a week. Right. And you gradually work yourself into it. The beautiful thing about this, and you know this, the beautiful thing about this is if you stick to this, Stuff will start to come to you so fast, yeah. it'll make your head spin. This is not a long, drawn-out, three- or four-year process. Once you start to get in that zone and you commit and you do this for half a day a week, in a month, everything will be different. One month, everything. In three months, you won't even recognize what's going on around you. You'll be like, amazed well when you said things start coming to you there there's a science behind that and that's there the is. particular right. activating system in the brain the ras and and basically what happens for those that don't know is whatever you assign importance to mm -hmm. whether it's scarcity right if if all you tell yourself is there's poor customers out there nobody wants to pay my prices i can't find employees and all that other shit this little thing in our brain somewhere recognizes that shit and it finds opportunities for it. So just by taking a few hours a week, start with five minutes in the morning. And it, I mean, that, I spent a couple minutes a day and I write down my own little mantras. And one of them is I am a magnet for money and success. I am a magnet for money and success. And it's hilarious. The days that I do that, I like find 20 bucks on the ground. Yep. Somebody calls me out of the blue and, and hires me that I talked yep. to a year ago. And the, and the days and the periods of time where I blow that off, I don't have those things happening. So, and so the RAS is, is basically um, our subconscious, our brain is, is programmed to find more of the shit that we tell it's important. And so yep. if you are telling yourself, uh, if you're looking for a red car, right? You're out looking for a red uh, BMW. I don't know. I'm just yeah. picking something, right? I don't know why I'd want a red one. But anyway, um, yeah. so you're going to see more of those on the road because your brain is now recognizing what's already been there. Yep. Those things are all, that success that we want is already out there. That BMW is already out there. And, and by you intentionally telling your brain what's important and to me like you said that's what working on your business is because you're working on you yeah. start with that and i also want to say this for those that are going there's no way i can step away for four fucking hours a week and all this other stuff and my business today well check this out then get up fucking earlier yeah okay get up at four o'clock go to bed earlier and then go ahead and 
fucking, you know, from five to seven, do that two mornings a week yeah, or something like that. But don't, none of this bullshit that you don't have time because our, we always find time for the shit that's important to us. Right. So what I want to do here is um, uh, I'm going to ask you a question here. Okay. And then, uh, Hopefully. all right. So I'm going to ask you a question. I have this deck of cards here that my, my producer, Travis, who runs my podcast, he's got a program called shortcut to podcasting. Give him a shout out there. And oh. I have this deck of cards of questions. All right. So I'm going to end today with two things. I'm going to shuffle the deck. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. And then after that, you're going to share with us where we can find you, how people could reach out, who maybe who's a great fit, um, you know, for, uh, for you and, and G4. Okay. All right. Cool. You good with that? Ready? No pressure. Uh-huh. I hope I have shuffle. a good answer for the, yeah, I don't know. The I don't, I don't know what, here we go. We're going to shuffle them once. Hopefully it'll be a nice juicy one, man. Something juicy. Um, that one's lame. Never mind. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, what technology do you wish existed? Oh, um, uh, driverless cars. <laughs> driverless Auto- cars. cars. It, it's it's. I guess it's something. I don't know if the the answer to the question is something new and that's never been thought of before. But I'm not that smart. Yeah. Yesterday we we uh, <laughs> we were on the other side of Florida. And we were driving back and, and like halfway through, I'm like, damn, this would be so cool if I didn't have to be paying attention and I didn't have to be driving. So, um, I was impressed with how quick you had an answer because you weren't well, like, because you know, it's fresh. Uh, it's fresh yeah, from it was fresh. Yesterday. You're like, yeah. And I was thinking about that because I have a trip coming up. That's a five hour drive in a couple of weeks, uh, shit this week. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I, I should hire somebody to drive yeah. me so that i can work or whatever yeah. so i i or relax to, or relax or just relax or, and not have whatever. to think about driving yeah not have to think about driving i love it man so man we talked about some some good stuff here the clarity and ownership and and controlling time and the mind and this and that um first of all i want to recommend anybody who's listening or watching to this go go to amazon get the uh seven secrets to becoming a wealthy contractor um, how about if I tell them how to get it for free? Well, shit, there you go. So, um, yeah, I want to, I want to put this book into the hands of as many, uh, contractors as I can. And so, um, what I've set up is I've set up a special page on, um, on the wealthy mm-hmm. It's the wealthy forward slash free book. And if you go there, um, you can get a co- a physical copy of the book for uh, just for shipping and handling. I'm buying the book. You just pay shipping and handling. Um, book is, by the way, 100% guaranteed. You, if you get it, you don't like it, you didn't buy it, but I'll refund you even the shipping and handling. You just send me a note and say, hey, Brian, I hate the book. And I'll just, I'll give you your money back. But when you get the book, you get access to a bunch of resources also that are mentioned in the book. You get the audio book and then you get some tools and things that, that, uh, that I mentioned throughout the book and some stuff that's not mentioned in the book that just, you know, helps make it happen. So it's that's the awesome. wealthy contractor.com forward slash free book. Love it, man. I appreciate you doing that. Um, so if somebody wants to have you do a workshop, they want to work with you, they want to have you come speak, whatever, what's the best way to reach out to you? Best thing to do is um, you can go to the wealthycontractor.com or you can go to our main site, which is G4 Marketing. And four is spelled out. If you put the number four, you're going to get somebody else. So it's G-F-O-U-R marketing.com. That's, uh, that's our main business. That's where you'll find, uh, that's where you'll find everything. Good stuff, man. Well, Brian, I appreciate you making the time to come back on the show here today. Anytime, Tom. Thank you. Forward to, uh, I know last time we talked, we talked about doing an event or something together. I think we need to make that happen, man. Yes, for sure. Rock some faces off, man. Yep. So, all right, buddy. Appreciate it. Travis, bring in the guitars, and we'll see you guys next time on The Fight. <laughs>